Today, guys, I'm going to show you a, a modification on one of these little inexpensive EEPROM programmers. This is some of run you, you know, probably four or five dollars on eBay. And the way you get them, they come out with uh, some good support for a couple of EEPROMs, but not really so good for automotive. I'm going to show you how we can expand the usage of this guy over to automotive. So I made, I made a, a quick set of uh, graphics to help with this. So out of the box, when you get this thing, it'll give you support for the 24XX series EEPROMs and the 25XX series CPROMs. Now what we can do is we can actually double this with this mod I'm going to show you today to also cover the 95XX and the 93XXX series EEPROMs. And you can see, you know, some of these are programmed by SIP, some of these are microwire or I2C. So these are definitely supported right out of the box and these is what we're going to talk about how to add them. Now, the, the mods are software and hardware that I'm going to talk about today. So you're going to need to use a specific programmer software for this in order to get these two new chips added. And then we're going to do a modification for 5 volts on, this, on the motherboard, or excuse me, the circuit board for this guy, and then a custom adapter in the case of the 93. For the 95, it is just making the 5 volt um, adaption to the pr printed circuit board so that we can get the right programming voltage for these types of automotive devices, automotive grade devices. Now when you look at this up close, the way it's designed is 24XX series chips will plug in the front part of the ZIF socket and 25XXs will plug in the back part of the ZIF socket. And so we're actually going to overload the usage of this to now pick up the 25, the 93, and the 95 all in this one section. Again, this applies to the, the black edition of the CH341A uh, mini programmer. It you know, might not apply to others. I only know that it works on this particular one. So let's go through what's involved with the adapter. So step by step, but I did it this way so you guys could easily reference it when you're making this. You're going to run pin 1 for chip select over to pin 1. This is 1 to 1. So from the adapter you're making, over to the ZIF socket position on the mini programmer itself. This is what you're going to connect for chip select. For the clock, again, we're going to run from pin 2 of the adapter over to pin 6 on the ZIF socket, coming out where the, where the 25XX position. On data in, pin 3 of the adapter, we're going to connect over to pin 5 of the ZIF socket connection. On data out, Pin 4 of the adapter is going to run over to pin 2 of the ZIF socket connection. Pin 5 on the adapter is going to be ground or voltage source supply, and that's going to come over to pin 4 on the ZIF socket uh, connection. Now this memory organization pin is not used on all 93,000 uh, series EEPROMs. On the ones that it is used on, when it's tied low, it means that it's an 8-bit organization of the memory on the device. And if it's tied high, it's a 16-bit organization. So depending on your needs, you'll either tie this to pin 4 and ground it, or put it to pin 8 and tie it high. For the devices I'm working with, which are 93C XX series devices, I'm going to be tying it to ground because they're all 8-bit devices. But you might want to even put uh, a switch or something in your own version of this if you work with both types. Uh, program enable is not used on the devices I work with, so I didn't connect it at all. There's only a few of these that are going to need this. Most of them aren't going to need this at all. And then last, of course, is voltage common collector or your plus 5 voltage. And those are pin 8, so you're going to tie those both together. So when you make this adapter, what you'll end up with is something like this. So I, I took, you know, when you buy this particular device. You'll get some spare boards, you'll get some headers that they give you. And I just used that to make this. Now you can kind of see one of the traces at least running over to pin 2 here uh, over on the side. And the others are all running underneath, but you can kind of see where they're, they're soldered on. For example, pin 6 uh, for the org pin is grounded out to, to, to ground on pin 5. And uh, pin 8, you can kind of see there's an attachment there where it's connecting over to what's going to go to pin 8 on, on the under underlying connection. So all the modifications I did to make this adapter are right here on top. And then that way I can just come over and, and put one of these standard um, clip headers on here. If I can get it lined up. You know, the red mark is usually pin 1, and then you can line that up with pin 1. And then you'll have something that you can actually put in here, and then you'll put it into the position for pin 1 on the device like we showed in the graphic. 
and then you have an adapter that you can now read these 93,000 series EEPROMs. So now that's the, that's the initial adapter modification. Now let's talk about the printed circuit board modification. So let's take a look at that. All right, guys, so that gets us reading. But in order to do a write, we're going to have to modify the programmer itself. So I'm going to show you the modification that we're going to need to do. Now, yours might not have this problem, but on the one I have, they've got power for VCC. So when we flip this guy up, this is going to be VCC for the 25, and this is going to be VCC for the 24. And if we tone this out, we can see these are tied together, but they're not connected to 5 volts. They're connected to 3.3. And 3.3 volts would be great if you were doing a chip on a BIOS board for a PC or something like that. But for automotive work, that, that's no good. We need 5. So the mod we need to do to the board is we're going to need to cut this 3.3 trace, and we're going to need to jumper a wire from 5 volts and restore the full power that we need to write the chip. I'm going to go make that mod. We'll come back, and we'll see if we can get it right. All right, so here's the two modifications on the actual board so that now we can write, because we have to be able to write at 5 volts. First modification is on this 3.3 volt voltage regulator. We're going to lift this middle pin off so that we're no longer outputting that voltage, because we're not going to use it at all anymore. That's modification one, so you just lift this middle pin. Modification two we talked about in the previous sequence. Now we're going to do the bodge wire over here from plus 5 over to this pin, since we know this pin and, and the other pin one, uh, 8 are both connected, we just need to run the bodge wire from here. And then we're, we've cut the trace all together on the 3.3 volt supply, so that just in case there's something else over here that we missed, it's cut completely. Now with those modifications, we can come over here now, and we can connect this to a USB connection, and we get power here, and then what I've done is I've I've taken, you know, just a sample here. I've got a, a Delphi body control module out of a Chevrolet, and I've removed the, the EEPROM we want to read here, and I've put it inside the test clip. And, you know, normally on something like this, ultimately, when you have to take it out, most of the time, you know, you could use a, a lot of these chips, you could read them in circuit, but these 93,000 ones, at least on these Delphi boards, are almost impossible to read in circuit. You have to remove them. And so, you know, a more practical modification would be to take something like this and, and apply the changes that I showed earlier, uh, since you're going to have to take it out anyway. But for showing in the video, I just made it to this board here and the test clip adapter to show it. And so here I've got a 93C66 device that came off this body control module, and I've, I put it inside here. So now over here on this PC, I'm going to fire up a copy of this AS Programmer version 2103. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to set my IC as a microwire type chip, microchip corporation. And then see, you can see here all these 8 and 16 bit selections go back to that organization pin that I showed earlier. In our case, we're doing an 8 bit 9366. And so now I can come over here and I can read this guy. And voila, I'm reading a 9366 on a CH341A. Uh, you know, here's the VIN number inside this particular, you know, uh, device. I could come over here and just to show you, for example, I'm just going to change a couple of bytes of this, and I can come over here and write that to the EEPROM. And now that we've made the 5 volt modification, we can reliably write to this type of device. And now I'm going to come over here and clear the buffer just to show you that it's going to read back that way. I'm going to reread the device. And when it comes up now, we can see the two characters we changed, the Z2 that we put in there in place of the G1. So again, this is a pretty cheap device and a pretty easy modification to double its utility value. Uh, the 95,000 series uh, uh, EEPROMs just needed 5 volts really to work. There's no modification other than the, the 5 volt piece on the board. You don't need to do an adapter. I'll put a link to the driver for this CH341 chipset uh, that you need uh, from the manufacturer actually and I'll put a link to um, the folks out here that took this GitHub project for AS Programmer and extended and modified it. Uh, actually it was one guy, I shouldn't say folks, it was one guy um, that made this change so you have all these additional devices that it supports versus the one most people are aware of with the version 1.4 series, this 2.0013 and higher 
will give you what I've shown here. If you've got some questions about this mod, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Always check the video description for the latest information. So then keep the video current. I'll try to um, make changes there as things cha uh, change version-wise or driver links. And if you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.